Good evening. This is the part of the advisory parks and rec board and the Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, January 28th, 2002. The meeting will now be uh, run by our chairman, Dan Silbo. Good evening, everybody. Um, so tonight, um, we're going to start off with public comments, but when I say that, is there anybody here other than the sports groups from the public? No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anybody. All right. I don't believe anybody else. All right, so we can jump right into the um, discussion with the sports groups. So um, I don't know, Kath, if you want to introduce them or have them introduce themselves, I'm not sure who's... Sure, what I could do is just call on them and, and they can introduce themselves and let us know which sports group they're from. So I see that um, Clem came in. Are you connecting to audio? Are you? Yeah, I was, I was having an issue, but I think it's, it's I'm all set now. So okay. I, I, sh I should be good to okay. go. So Clem, introduce yourself. All right, uh, Clem Clementin, uh, field coordinator for uh, George G. Ritchie Soccer. Okay. Um, and I see Mark, oh, Mark St. Andrew. Yeah. yeah Mark St. Andrew, uh, Weathersfield Little League Vice President. Okay. And Gary. Yeah, sorry, Gary St. Hilaire. Sorry, I'm in my car. Um, <laughs> but uh, Weathersfield Little League uh, Safety Officer. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in from your car. Yeah. <laughs> well, that basketball practice, so. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so, so, Kathy, do you want to go through um, what Little League sent us already? You want to do that first, and then we can get other comments. Uh, before we do that, Dan, do we want to introduce the park board members? Sure. So, I, I think most of you know me. Mark, I coached uh, soccer uh, with Mark, and he coached my son in baseball. So, I know Mark. I know Clem from soccer, my son referees soccer. And uh, Gary, I don't know, but I'm Dan Sobel, the chairman of the park board. Um, and then um, I think we go, uh, Mike, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Mike Bizai, vice chairman. Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom Moll. Mike. Uh, let's see who's here. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne Barton. Um, Mary Mahar. <clears throat> Hi, Mary Mahar. Mary Frazier. Mary, this Mary Frazier, she's just a, a new member. She just joined a few months ago. Um, Colleen. Hi, I'm Colleen Medical. Yeah. And in addition to that, there's uh, Ken Lesser from the town council is our liaison. He's with us. And then there are a number of people from the rec department. So uh, Kathy. Uh, yeah, Mary's here. Our, Mary is our assistant director of Parks and Rec. And Rachel Mattioli's here also, and she's our recreation supervisor. And one of her responsibilities is overseeing all the uh, athletic fields and working with all our sports groups in town. I think you missed Suzanne, Dan. Oh. No, did I get you? I think I got Suzanne. Yeah, you? okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so we started having these meetings, what, about four or five years ago, Kathy? with the sports groups to try to get uh, input on uh, the fields and any concerns or issues. And, uh, you know, we would work from there and to try to make improvements. So um, we see Little League here. I think everyone's got what Little League sent us. And um, I just want to be um, clear to uh, Mark or um, Gary, who can you tell us who evaluated the fields and, you know, what they did? How were these fields? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So we, we did it as part of our safety plan. Um, so uh, together with the uh, president of baseball, uh, vice president of uh, softball, myself, and um, our uh, head uh, uh, of officiating, chief umpire. All right. Very good. Is there anything? On the list, I don't know if you want to go through the list quickly or if you want to highlight anything on the list that we should be paying attention to in particular, or uh, you know, if you want to go through everything one by one quickly, that you could do that as well. 
I don't know if you have anything in front of you. Do you have anything? Well, I think they're, they're also looking for the response from the town back when they gave us the list as okay. far as what's been done to date. And um, we did invite staff from physical services. They had other commitments and couldn't make it tonight. So we met with them ahead of time to kind of go over Little League's questions just to make sure we'd be able to give them some feedback for that. Can you feed, so, fill us in on Kathy? Yeah, and, and Gary, you can, you know, or any of you stop us if you have questions or anything. Uh, Rachel and I met with, um, with Alan, who's the um, park supervisor. So um, when the, and when, when you guys did the, the uh, survey, when you went out to the field, you did that in um, March 27th. And then um, Alan got the, um, so that was the beginning just when we were starting to work on the fields. And then Alan got their report in May. So that was when it was looked at because work had already been done on some of the fields. So um, Rachel did a lot of work with Alan on going over the survey list. So she can give you a little overview on what we, uh, what Alan told us had been done as part of normal get ready for the spring fields. And then we can go into questions you may have on some of the other things. Does that make sense? So just kind of a quick you know, um, overview background information. Obviously the joy of living in New England, it can be 70 degrees on March 1st and snowing on March 30th, which makes spring prep, you know, spring field prep a little bit difficult sometimes. As part of the overall spring field prep that physical service, services does is one, they roll fields. Two, they go out as far as the, um, <clears throat> when it comes to the baseball fields, particularly they're going out, replacing any type of, you know, the home plates, the bases, these, the baseball supply equipment that we order during the winter. They're making sure our home plates lined up with first and third. They're checking the heights of the pitcher's mound and that we are just, we, they, for the little league fields, the pitcher mound height that they're using is six inches. Um, they are going and any lips that they find on the fields, they're going to fix those um, and then do any type of fence repairs at that time. So that's kind of what they do as part of the spring field preparation overall. So some of the things that maybe showed up in the initial service in, sorry, the, the initial survey in March were things that they addressed fixed at the beginning of April when they were out getting the fields ready. So that's just kind of a background on what they shared with me in regards to when they go out and prepare the fields for the spring. Any questions regarding that part of the just overall preparation of the fields? Okay. Um, and so then I know there's a lot of, we went through the list of things and we kind of went through, yes, this was addressed. These are things that are kind of still outstanding um, for us to talk about. What I can tell you is that uh, green vinyl chain link fence is back in stock. Very hard to find. We found it two weeks ago hopped on the opportunity and ordered all of the fence to replace at Greenfield. So I placed that order two weeks ago. It is hopefully, they said three to four weeks. Um, we all know shipping, shipping can sometimes be delayed. So it is a goal um, that, that is purchased, ordered, hopefully should be in the next couple of weeks. And that will be a project that physical services themselves will do prior to the part of the season that they will replace all of the chain link fence at Greenfield. Welcome news, thank you. Was there anything specifically on the survey, Mark or Gary, that you wanted to address? Well, I, I, you know, one of the questions that came up is, you know, you talked about making sure the pitchers and mounds are, are at six inches. Uh, another piece of it is is the um, the grading of it, right? The ramp, it, you know, in some cases it, it don't have a nice smooth um, incline to the mound, and that makes it difficult for the kids when they're stepping off and, and training them to do the right thing. 
Um, so that was one one item I wanted to touch on. And the other piece was um, the upkeep of the mounds, right? You know, right in front of the rubber, the kids dig in their shoes and, they, and it gets to be a hole. Um, you know, are we regular is, you know, is the field maintenance team regularly going out there and backfilling that in um, more than just, you know, that one time when we, when we set it up at the beginning of the year, you know, and how, how often do they do that? They do when they're out doing like their grooming of the fields, when they're lining and doing that, they are doing raking and filling the holes back in. They're not measuring every single time that they're there to make sure that it's six inches, but they are raking everything back into place um, when as part of their their daily grooming of the fields. Okay, so that should be, uh, as I was gonna say, so they groom it every day. So it should be, even if there's a game yesterday, it should go in and, and fill that in. Correct. Um, that is, the it, is there any, sorry, is there anything we should do? You know, hey, if I'm a coach out there and I come and see, Hey, this is, you know, this is really, you know, the, I, I, you know, I see that hole. Is there something someone I should report to, or is it just they'll be out there tomorrow? Um, just curious there. If at any time you see an issue with the field that needs to be addressed, to contact me, and then I will reach out to physical services. So if you, you know, I always love pictures. Everybody has smartphones, I feel, nowadays. So if you're at Classic Field and you see something, just take a picture and send it, to, like, just send it to me and just say, hey, Rachel, at Classic okay. tonight, this is what I saw. And then that way, when I come in in the morning, I'll already have that picture and can then reach out to physical services and um, address it with them at that time. Yes, Mike, see your hand up. I guess, um... One of the things that concerned me when I saw the list, and I know it's all because it was taken a long time ago, but I, I think, and I don't know how the rest of the board members feel, but it would be nice maybe by the next meeting for somebody to go through and check off the things that were done and weren't done. Because one of the concerns I have, and I think it's been expressed um, as time went on, some of these are, I call them safety issues, which to me should rise a little higher to the top. And I'm concerned to make sure that, you know, sharp metal around a fence or there's a hole behind something where somebody could get hurt. and Reporting it is one thing, but I think one of the things that we've been concerned with, and that was kind of the purpose of these meetings um, once a year, is to make sure this stuff gets taken care of. And you know, following up on Gary's comment is that you know, it's he puts a request in, but you know, obviously somebody's got to make sure it gets done. And especially when they're related to safety, I think that's an extra concern for me. So I would be really um, interested to make sure that certainly the safety and and the rest of the issues because they're all. They all make sense to get done, but safety is, uh, you know, somebody getting hurt out there and then somebody not knowing or it didn't get reported or didn't get done kind of leaves us hanging out there. So I think that um, the whole system of how, of how things, how jobs get submitted and if they're getting done in the follow-up, I think has been one of the big concerns that we've all had or the Parks Board has had for a while. So um, we just want to make sure the stuff gets done in a timely fashion and there's follow through to make sure somebody's aware that it did get done. So. And Mike, when we met, oh, go ahead, Colleen. I was just going to also like mention or kind of question, like if there is a hole in the field um, on a packed area like a pitcher's mound, um, where after wear and use, there is going to be a hole near the, the pitcher's strip, that strip. Are they just like pouring loose um, dirt? on it to like fill the hole? Is there some sort of procedure so that it's packed down and doesn't just get kicked loose um, at the next game and then there's still a hole? Um, I also know that there was a, um, one of the home plates over the summer uh, was, there was one corner, the corner, the third base corner was slightly lifted and a kid slid into home and cut his leg um, because it wasn't a flat, um, or there was ground that had been worn down, same thing, right? Perhaps they're just sprinkling some dirt to making it level so it looks level, um, but the minute anybody comes near it, the loose is just, the loose to dirt might just be being raked or brushed away. So I just wonder if there's a procedure to ensure that added dirt is incorporated into the field so that it's not just Dusty. I think that we could certainly bring that to the maintenance's attention. 
but that is that is what they're trained to do and if if anyone sees a continuing issue that you tell us to get it fixed and you see dirt there and then the next day the dirt is kicked out again and Rachel keep, tracks that whether or not this is an, a reoccurring problem or it just happened one time, that's important for us to know what's going on out in the field. Mm -hmm. And I would say if there was a, any time, I think we've found at least any time, that to me when you talked about home plate being up, that's a safety issue. And um, our guys are trained to that. And I would say if any of the coaches see that, you know, to call us up and we'll replace it that, you know, that that's normal standard maintenance. And if, if you don't get a result, then call us back and we'll follow up on it. And we'll work with the maintenance people to make sure that's happening. You know, and that, and I think that's why we're having these meetings just to have better communications. And I like Rachel's, I like when staff is always thinking, take a picture. Cause we forward that picture right down to maintenance. So we don't even have to explain, you know we just give them a point of reference and they, um, and that seems to work. And I was just going to go back to Mike asking what all was done on the list. And when we did sit down with Alan, there were a lot of these things were just normal spring and Little League was making us aware of everything. Mm -hmm. So, and I believe at least we went through it and we thought generally a lot of the regular get ready for spring fix the fences, those kinds of things were done. Um, we noticed there were a couple of things that had more of a project when you talk about a redoing a um, uh, warning track. Mm -hmm. to, to redo a warning track, that's not just normal spring maintenance to, to either rebuild it or to put in a new one, if you will. And we talked to Alan about those kinds of things and they, they fall under like a project that we have to figure out a time when the field is available to get in and do that. Mm -hmm. And he brought to our attention that, um, that lately there is a lot of, uh, the kids are playing ball all the time now. The, ball, the baseball fields that get the most wear are the ones that you're using spring, summer, and fall. So we need an opportunity, and this is where we need to communicate to, okay, if you want the, um, I think Greenfield might've had warning track on it. And I think that um, something like that, where we have to dig out and then put stuff, put material in, that needs some time and we need to be able to get on the field. And it's not something we have time to do in the spring. So we literally have to plot out, we have to plan some of those on a schedule when the field is available. And when you finish playing in October, we lose all our maintenance people to leaves November 1st. So we run out of time to do projects just because of, of their schedule. So I think these are things we can work on and plot out and then figure out when can we get on the field? How long is it gonna take? Will you give us the field for this long? And we'll plan to do that. So I think that can be a work in progress that we can look at some of those. And we'd be happy to sit down and talk about it. I think, Kathy, what you just said is the most important part. I feel like we, as a, as a department and physical services, keep using this excuse that fields are played on all the time and there's no time to get on the field to do make changes to it. But I think if there's better communication with the sports team, the sports teams could then say, you know what, if you need this field for X amount of time, we can rearrange our scheduling to make it available, but if they don't know that you wanted it, like, like I feel like for the past couple of years, both sides have just been blaming the other side. For, you know, physical services isn't doing the work, and physical services is saying the field's never available, but there's no communication as to when the field could be made available. And I'm sure that the sports teams would love would rearrange the schedules if it means that maintenance on the field would get done. Um, that's point one. Point two is, do you feel, and did physical services feel, and Alan and everyone feel that the list that um, Little League gave you was helpful? And is that something that we should be encouraging every sports program to be doing in order to have that 
you know, we've, we've often talked about this lack of communication and sports teams don't feel like their problems with the fields are getting heard. Would this type of movement and precedence be helpful to help to improve the communication on both sides? And is it something that we should encourage the other programs to do as well? Um, actually, Alan brought that up when we were talking with him, that he found it very helpful. Great. And that he appreciated it because it gave him a list to go right down the exactly what you said. But it's, but it's important if the survey is being done March 27th that we have it, not May, not May 14th, like so that if they're doing it, that we get it during the time where they can get out and do some, if there's any stuff that needs to get addressed before the season starts. Yeah, so I guess it, that would be important information for them to know. Like yeah. what types of things are we looking for, right? Obviously a big $50,000 project is probably already on our radar. Um, so what types of things are we looking for maintenance wise and when does that list need to be handed in? Mark's hand's been up for a while. Go ahead. Yeah, um, just wanted to touch on a couple of things. The time where the fields, yeah, the fields absolutely were in use last year full time. And I think that's great because they weren't really in use at all the year prior. And there was a huge opportunity that went by. Um, I'll say now we there was a lot of other things going on at that time, but it's outside work pretty well spaced apart, et cetera. And to address the warning track really quick at Greenfield, there is a warning track actually at Greenfield. It was there for quite some time. And from what I understand, and was told that they actually wanted grass to grow in place on the warning track to stop erosion over down the right field side because the way the water runoff was. So you had something in place, which is a safety feature, a warning track on a ball field uh, is a safety feature that they allowed to intentionally get overgrown and now you still have a bit of a drainage issue over there because you can see the runoff and where the water runs out of the field over there. That's going to have to be fixed anyway. And, you know, we would still like it, I'm sure, because the high school uses that as well at the uh, JV and soft, uh, sorry, uh, freshman level, if they feel the freshman team, um, would like to have that in there as well. But I'm not going to speak for them. I can just say I know that they would. Um, but that, that's just a, a point I wanted to call on that one. But as far as the, the fields and the, you know, the areas around home plate and the holes and the, the divots in front of the pitching um, plate there, uh, it really should be a clay base. I don't doubt, yes, they are filling it in. They are turning it over, the, you know, prepping it for the game plate throughout the season. But when those things get worn away um, and you just turn over the field like you would on a normal basis um, to the point that was made previously, it's just loose soil that quickly gets torn away within the first inning of the game, right? Because kids are stepping in, stepping out. Um, constantly there. So it, it does need over time, not every time, obviously, right? But over time, it does need some sort of clay base in there to replace what was there. So there's a sturdy um, foundation underneath. Uh, that's all. And, you know, in the past, we've actually even gone out and purchased clay bricks um, for the town to install. As far as what the field needs, et cetera, I was more than thrilled to hear the, the news on the, the fencing. So I'm kind of excited about that because there are some some things over there that, you know, which we know, which is why it's getting done. So that's great. Um, so yeah, it, you tell us to that point when you need that survey done. I mean, if we have to go out and walk the fields tomorrow before it snows, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I think we all, all three of us that are on this call right now, uh, Mark Hacker, our president joined uh, here as well. Uh, Sorry, I'm late. I'm, I'm sure all three of us would gladly do that. Just let us know. And one thing just um, for warning tracks and Kathy would probably be able to speak better to this because I was not working for the department at the time that Alan said that when the lighted field was designed, it was designed to have the clay warning track. Yeah, not the stone dust warning track, but the clay warning track. That's the way it was designed. But there are things, again, that, that we can we can talk about as projects and look at what um, what you're like to do. And we talk with maintenance about that. Yeah, and yeah, you're right. You. Ellen did bring up that they wanted grass to grow out at Greenfield Warning Track because of the drainage. 
They've been working on that drainage problem. They literally had engineering go in. There is a drain along the third base line that they had checked with the camera that you could put down there to see if it was clogged. So it wasn't clogged, it was working. They thought that might've been the problem why the water wasn't draining. So they're still looking into it. So they are still trying to, we get a lot of water for some reason at that end of that, the park. Mm -hmm. And they've been trying to get it moved off of the field. And they thought the drain was the problem. And when they put the camera down it, it seemed okay. So we have to move on to the next thing. So Kathy, um, I see a few other things on here. Do they still have that volunteer day where they can literally can identify things and with the town supervision, they can go out and do them. I see some painting here, um, you know, replacing some rotted boards on the uh, bleachers, that, that type of thing. Can they do any of that or what are they limited to if they do have that type of day? They, they, if they chose, if they wanted to have a volunteer day, we would sit down like we have in the past and work with them and identify what could, what needed to be done or what could be done. And we would look at, at doing it as a, um, a group, a group thing where we would bring in a couple of maintenance guys and literally would get some of their volunteers and we could develop a list of what needed to be done on that particular day that had been done in the past. No, is Little League interested in that? Um, I think what Little League is interested in is just to understand the, sort of the format of it. Because the, the way that that volunteer um, day is, I think, worded in the agreement or, well, between, uh, I think, the union and the, and the town or the union and Little League is that there may be an opportunity to us for us to use the same equipment that they, is used on um, uh, on the fields. So, you know, big equipment, let's be honest. Like that's that's what sort of what we think about. Are we able to help with turning over the fields and things like that? I'm not necessarily saying putting a, a large mower on there because clearly, you know, any residential person can't just jump on and do something like that. So stuff like that is what we're trying to, to gauge. Yeah, I think to a lesser uh, extent, Dan, we'd absolutely be happy to, whether it be, you know, hey, let's repaint the um, dugouts, right? At Lighted or, or wherever. Um, you know, we're happy to, to help out in, in any capacity. I think it's a matter of identifying what those items would be and how we can help support it. So, Kathy, can we identify you know, what those items are that Little League can help do at least to start off with? And then we can certainly go through this list, uh, you know, have uh, maintenance go through the list and, and see what can be done. So that's one question. The other thing is, we talked about drainage, especially on the upper fields. Is um, we are making any progress on that at all? And with, uh, I think it was with the uh, classic, right? Yeah, we are. are the with the progress we've made is with classic. Is the town engineer has developed a a plan to handle the water, to do a drainage plan, and and then a field renovation for classic. And we've carried that on our capital improvement program. And uh, we're working at getting it funded. Okay. Is there any daylight in sight for that? I mean, I get it, you know, it's gotta get funded, uh, but how long has it been on, on, on that, that plan at this point? And we know that the drainage has been a, an issue for years. That's the, that's the frustration we deal with that our yeah. items stay on our plan for a while till they get funded. We are going to be considering some things as we go through this capital budget, and um, and the park board will be making some priorities in that regard and looking at it. So, so I, it, sorry, go ahead, Kathy. No, 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 you can. Yeah. So I guess what I would say is, is there any consideration given when you know things are on there? for, I'm going to just arbitrarily say 10 years. So, you know, the longer something is on there, does it ever get pushed up to the, the top of the list or is it not getting to the top of the list because it's such an expensive, you know, item that needs to be addressed and it just, we can't find the budget for it. And if that's the case, then, you know, I think that's something that we're going to have to be able to deal with, but then what are our alternatives to be, um, you know, to be reviewed? Because there, there, there clearly could be some other option to, you know, help mitigate if we can't get, you know, everything in, into the budget line that we're looking for. So, um, Mark, let me address this a little bit. There's things we have on there, uh, on, on our list that have been on there since I've been on the park board for 20 years. 
and have it gotten done. And Tom has been on it just as long as I have. So um, it's frustrating for us, but if Little League or any other group has a project where they want to you know, put forth some money, come to the town council and say, look, this is going to cost $200,000. A Little League will donate $25,000 or $50,000 to it. Um, and the town kick in the rest, usually that does help push things forward. Okay. Um, just in general, I'm not saying that you, you do that or not. And we do have an opportunity with the money from the federal government that we just received that we're going to be talking about a little bit, um, uh, what the money should go to. And uh, we're going to let Ken, know, who's our council liaison on things that we want to direct the money to. But certainly the field drainage has been on there for a while and we're very well aware of it. Is that a good way to put it, Kathy? Yeah, no, and I would say, and I, I would say classic has been on the on the list. And one of the things I think the last, maybe it's been on three years that we actually had our engineering department go up there and do the drainage plan mm -hmm. so that we actually have a plan for it. And um, and that's that's a big help when we actually have drawings that you could go out to bid or quote depending on the cost. So so right. it's moving along and it's not as fast as we'd like it to. Well, it's never going to be as fast as we'd like it to. I think <laughs> we can we can appreciate that. Yeah. Well, we're working on it. Colleen. I'd like to hear from um, Little League uh, their opinion of the town's response to this letter, uh, what's this list. Um, I know it's a year old, so it's kind of hard to sort of gauge, but when the town received this, did you see the, um, the issues addressed in a manner that, um, in a time frame that you expected or that you're pleased with? Uh, Colleen, I'm sorry, what letter are you referring to? The, um, we, the field survey, we received the field survey um, dated April 14, 2021. It was a, a list of all of the fields and each of the um, safety features and um, things that need that ought to be replaced or, or be addressed. Right, Gary, is that um, what we know. provided them? Sorry, Colleen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm running, running from one, one place to another. So my head's not necessarily on straight here yet. Um, yeah, no, I, I think what we were looking for on that field survey is, well, let me take a step back. So annually, as part of our requirements to you know, be sanctioned by uh, Little League, you know, we're required to walk our fields and, and do a survey and have an understanding of, you know, where, where are, where are their safety issues? And, and quite frankly, you know, we'll, we'll sort of just identify everything. Anything that we think is wrong, how do we fix it? Because the smallest thing can still be a safety issue, but it may not be a, a huge issue, right? Um, so we put everything and, and anything on, onto that list because we it, it is a problem and we hope that, you know, we can, um, you know, address it. Um, I'd say, you know, when the survey was initially, you know, provided over to the, the parks team, they did take care of a few uh, things immediately, a hole in a fence at Classic. They tied some of the fences up um, uh, with the, you know, fence ties. Uh, they fixed the latch on the batting cage at Classic. Um, so you did see some immediate needs, but I don't think that we saw everything tackled on the list. And so what we were trying to better understand is, hey, you have had the list. What have you been able to knock, knock off? Um, you know, as we go out through the through the course of the season, sure, there's wear and tear, and we expect that, you know, things will will you know um, need some additional attention. Um, and I think that's part of our question too, because you know, if you use the the fence tying as an example, um, the dugout at at Classic, um, you could definitely walk down that fence and see a number of areas that, if you were to just take some new ties, tie it back up, it's good it's very loose all over the place. And, you know, we're there a lot, don't get me wrong, but Parks and Rec is there every day as well, tending to the field. So part of, part of, uh, of what we want to understand is, are they taking a look around outside of just doing the obvious, right? They, they're there to, to, to line the fields, mow the grass, rake the, rake the fields, et cetera. 
There's other things that I would hope that they are looking for, um, such as you know a, ho a hole in the fence or the, the fence is, is not as safe as it could be. So it is protected uh, and we shouldn't necessarily have to you know call it out. Yeah, we can, don't get me wrong, but we'd also like to see them do a little bit more on that end. So to answer your question, Colleen, directly is, I don't think that everything has been satisfied on the list. We'd have to take a look or revisit it. And when we do our, 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 serve, our, our walk of the fields again, we should you know, sort of do the compare to say what was addressed, what is still outstanding, and then you know, are there any, there are any additional things as well. Kathy, I wonder if because this was a value to physical services, um, if we could create some sort of almost template um, for each of the school, uh, each of the leagues to use as like, this is a safety thing that needs to be addressed immediately. This is something that needs to be addressed before the beginning of the season or, you know, within the next few months. And this is kind of like a pipe dream, um, but it still needs to be recognized. So that because this did add value to physical services, why not um, get the feedback from all of the, the teams, uh, the leagues, um, but uh, obviously allowing them some sort of guidance as to the right way to do it, that's going to be helpful to physical services. We can certainly look into that. I'm sure they exist already. Okay, yeah. what? Oh, uh, the you're, list? You, you're referring to like a, uh, a template for the sports groups could could check off what is good or, not, or it needs work on the field? Is that? Well, I was kind of thinking like, hey, there's this hole um, on the pitcher's mound that needs to be addressed right now. But there's also this fence that is pretty worn out and beat up. And we would love to have the fence around the entire field of the plastic replaced. Well, that's kind of expected to be a, di a different time timeframe. Um, but it, if they're going to all be going out and maybe I would assume that all of the leagues do this, but maybe they don't. If they're gonna be going out and walking the field, why not have them making these lists and, and giving them to the physical services, not with the expectation that it's all gonna get fixed, but with the expectation that at least that they're going to be heard. Sure, we could, we could certainly talk with the sports groups about that <clears throat> and Little League is probably much more formal, but the other groups do talk with us, you know, on a daily basis for the day-to-day the -day stuff. I think you're looking at both that and kind of the short-term and long-term. I, I think it seems like, I hate to say it, but I think we've made some progress, but not to the degree that I personally would want to see it because this all comes back to communications. I think the, one of the questions that we've always had is that, and I think this is great and certainly thank the Little League. I think, you know, did a great job. And, and I would agree with Mark's comment. A lot of the stuff, I don't think I'm convinced that when staff goes out there, physical services, I don't think, I think they're overlooking a lot of stuff that I would agree it shouldn't have to be seen, you know, a loose fence with wire ties if they're tying it up one section, look at the whole fence. Why not do it all while you're there? Um, that just makes sense. But, you know, the whole thing about providing a list or coming up with a template is great. It goes in there, um, hopefully not in a deep dark hole, but when it gets done, to me, there should be some, it's been complete, goes back to Parks and Rec, um, and also goes back to whoever created it in this case the little league so it's clear it's done they don't have to just go and check to see if that thing got fixed and i don't i'm not convinced that's done and i think we talked about this before what what's in place to have a work order written where does it go, Who does it go? mike we're losing you a little bit okay. we're losing you a little bit okay no i just i just couldn't hear some of it um you know who follows up and just kind of closing the whole thing and i don't i just i'm not convinced that that's done I think in a way that is probably the most efficient and that's that's where I think we fall apart. It's, it's, it is part of communication, certainly, but you know, we're, the work orders, I don't think, and if they do get done, it's not, it should go back to the initiator, in my opinion. So I think if, if it is happening, um, somebody, and, and I know physical services are not tonight, but somebody needs to follow through. And this list is great. And I would certainly agree that the other groups 
and maybe we should we should come up with I don't I don't think it's the parts board's role to micromanage what physical services does and how they do it, but it seems like we just continue to talk about the same thing. And I I'm not convinced that it's really any better. Sorry, but I, I don't I don't see it. Okay. Little like anything else. I know I came late. Did did we address the um, aprons on the first and third base side, the divots or the valleys that we have as part of the fields? No, so, I, I, and I believe that is part of, it's definitely part of the, the field survey. So that's an ongoing issue that we have seen. So, you know, when you round, you're rounding first and third, um, what we see is, you know, the, 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 ground actually just deteriorates, right? It becomes a sort of a valley uh, and it can be from, you know, grooming the fields. It could be from blowing the fields. It could, you know, it could just be over over time. But what we're seeing is such a, a, a downgrade on the in those areas right now that it is becoming more of a safety risk, especially if an infielder is trying to get a, you know, a pot fly in that area or a kid is rounding the base, you know, in, in, a, in a fast manner. Um, I, we would really like to see those addressed uh, in advance of this this uh, this new 2022 season, uh, because especially at Classic um, on the third base side, and I would say the first base side at Lighted for sure are probably the two worst areas. But I would say take a look at all fields on the first and third base lines uh, to make sure that it is level and. It is hard, don't get me wrong, because of the, sort of the grade and how it all happens, but we do need some some fill in there to make it more safe. All right. Kathy, you got that right. Yep, I wrote yep. that down. Um, thank thank yep. you, guys. I don't, I don't mean to monopolize all the time. Nope, that's anything else. But we... Mark, right. Gary, did we hit everything on our agenda? We did for my side. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. We don't, we're not going to cut you off. Have you got anything else? Certainly. All right. Good. All right. So now we got um, soccer. Clem, we got. So, Clem, what do you got for us? Right now, I think just following up on a couple of things that were already said and good points made by a few people is that if, you know, I, I think now Doc will be happy to come up with a. Uh, you know, a list of like a to-do list for the soccer fields prior to the spring season. And then um, with, you know, whether I'd be rolling this particular field or, or overseeding, you know, the goalie box at, at Dean. And I think if, if to, to Mike's point, if, you know, we get that list out and then if we can just get a little report as, okay, item three was roll the field. If, if we can say, well, okay, it was done on June 5th, then, then we know that it's actually um, that, you know, we're being heard and, and it's being worked mm -hmm. on and, and done or not done. And then we can, you know, we can, you know, send another friendly reminder later in, later in the season. But I think uh, that's that's probably what what will what I'll, I'm sure what I'll be doing. Um, and once it's warm enough to get outside and, and do the soccer. Field. So we'll, you know, we'll send it over and and uh, we'll go from there. And, and hopefully we can get most of most of that knocked off, obviously, you know, it's not going to be a huge ex expense item, but it's just going to be more of a safety item and, and, and a maintenance item. So I think I think we can work with with the town and physical services to, to get most of that knocked off. Kathy, I know we've talked about this at nauseum as far as how we can improve the communication between the sports field and things that are done at the at that need to get done and physical services and everything like that. And there's new systems that the town is looking at it to improve that, but. In the meantime, can we just set up, take 30 seconds and set up something like a Google Doc that all the sports teams have access to and Alan has access to and you have, like, it's easy enough to make a Google Doc with all these people invited on it and they can just, you know, these, they can just transfer that onto a Google Doc, the date it was put on the doc, and then the a running list of when it was completed so that, I mean, really what we're, a lot of this is what we're talking about and we've talked about over and over again is that the sports teams just wanna really make sure that the things they're asking for and that their taxpayer dollars are paying for are getting done. So if there can just be that 
verification that the town is addressing these things, I just think that in some sort of very simple format, and a, like I can set up a Google Doc for this in 30 seconds that will just can have those dates on it. Alan can be on it. It's a great, easy updated. When it's updated, everyone can see it. I don't know if that's something that we can look into in the meantime. Sorry. I'm, oh, sure. No, that, that's certainly something we can look into. Would that be something you guys would be interested in in putting uh, putting info on? Um, Little League or uh, soccer, Clem? Yeah, we, we, we will. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we're happy to support anything. Um, yeah, I, think the, I think the key and missing picture here is physical services, right? Like we've been talking about this, like Suzanne said, for years, but like we, we really just, everyone is saying we need physical services to communicate more with Parks and Rec. And I know that you don't control physical services, but um, we've been asking for this for years now and we're not getting any sort of response. So what do we need to do? Who do we need to, who do we need to start pestering? Because it's not you, Kathy, and we've been pestering you about it, but we know that you can't make a different department do stuff for us. <laughs> so how, who can we have that conversation with to get physical services to be, to have a better communication line with our, with our, with the people who they need to be communicating with? Well, that would be uh, the director of the department, Sal uh, Sally Katz. Sally. And she wasn't able to make it tonight because she had another commitment, but she offered to be available for a meeting anytime, you know, that we could set something up. So we could certainly follow up with her and maybe have a little subcommittee from the board or something or uh, meet with her and kind of talk about this and let her know how important it is and then get her response back. If that's something we could certainly follow up on that, Dan, if you'd like or something. Yes, yep. And I think uh, I'm glad Ken is here tonight. Um, kind of hear some of these things that have been coming up year after year. So uh, maybe Ken can help us out with a little bit of this as well. Can, can, my, can I ask a question there? And and I, I'm gonna be a little forward, but I, I mean this in the best way. Is it that, is it is it that physical service just doesn't have any accountability here, or is it some something different? Like where where's the breakdown? I mean, I've only been, you know, in this position for a little over a year at this point, but you know, my experience has been yes, they will they will take action when you know pushed. I think by Kathy and team, um, but you know they're also doing other work. So you know if they're they're needed to go someplace else, does that accountability accountability get lost? And if so, you know, how do we, how do we change that? So and if it's not that, for, it could be something completely different. I'm, I'm yeah, just thinking. Okay. So let me give you a little background. Um, so in summer, a lot of towns, the um, crews that, that work and do the main field maintenance and everything report to the rec department. Yep. And weather shield, they don't. They report to physical services. So Kathy has to ask for things. Um, and is that they, part of the uh, breakdown? I'm, I'm sorry, Dan, but like that is, do you stop right there and you say, all right, that's that's part of the biggest problem that we have is that they report to physical services and we don't have them reporting well, to Parks and Rec. Our, our board has asked to have a crew report to uh, Kathy and, uh, you know, that hasn't happened yet. There are staffing concerns, um, but the park board, uh, I think Suzanne's uh, and Colleen are smiling. But we've asked for the last several years if we could get a crew that was reporting to Kathy. That way, if anything like this needs to get done, it would get done. Um, but there are staffing issues and there are budgetary issues. So those are some of the things that we face when we... Uh, to answer your question too, Mark, there's, there's huge staffing issues with, with physical services. They have increased the amount of property that they have to maintain and they have their budget has been decreased and they haven't been given those positions because gotcha. of budgetary issues. Now, with that being said, it becomes a he said, she said sort of thing. You know, physical services says they're doing what is being done and the then the park, then the um, uh, sporting teams are saying it's not done or it's done incorrectly. 
And then there's just a breakdown with the communication between it getting done and getting checked off on some unknown list that physical services had and Rachel being stuck in the middle of having to keep track of it all. And then as one of her many jobs and then no, so there's, we have no evidence that they're not doing their job. So what we have been asking for is some sort of system where we can verify that things are getting completed in a timely manner because we can't complain if we have no proof. That's okay. sort of as nice as I can put it. You should run for office. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, Kathy, I got a couple other questions. As the, um, uh, uh, the uh, storage thing at Mill Woods, does soccer have that? Has that been ironed out? They the, shed S the shed to SDMS? Yes. We're, yeah, that's we're delayed on that. That we've got the okay and the town's been good. So yes, yeah, so that that's okay. been worked out. We, we are just uh, yes, that that's our issue. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Soccer? Anything? No, that's it. Thank you. No. All right. And certainly, if you have any issues or questions, you can get a hold of Rachel or Kathy or. I will be retired in April, so you could call me at home, but not too much. So, <laughs> so anything else? Do we have any other groups here? I see Marco Pizzaferrato. Is he from a group? He or represents is... flag football on behalf of Eagle Hit Football. Yeah, I just I popped in. I mean, I I just I saw the calendar invite. I did the flag football this year. I I don't have specific. I mean, I don't. I'm not even sure that really the, the meeting I thought was more informative for us or seeking. I thought it was more like seeking advice on, you know, we're going to build a new facility or something. So I apologize for not knowing, but I was, I got on here a little late um, from the flag football standpoint. I'm sure it's probably, I mean, I think it's pretty evident that fuller fields are not really the greatest fields, um, but it is a surface. Um, it's just not, I, I guess soccer does play there. I don't know who plays there. I know that when flag does in the fall, there is one field where you are playing uphill and, you know, there's little undulations. It was pretty butchered this, this fall, which, you know, is somebody's mistake, but it is what it is where they kind of drove the tractor through there. So that really caused some big rivets um, in the middle of the season. So it was a little bit of an issue, but I never had an issue with the painting. I thought all that stuff was, was, was done and timely. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there was ever a way you can go ahead and regrade two fields for a flag football league, that'd be great. But I know that, you know, that's probably way outside the means, excuse me, pumpkin, way outside the means. Um, I don't know about the other Eagles youth football here, you know, for, for tackle wise and, and all those kind of things, but just speaking on behalf of that, I mean, that's the biggest thing I can say. I mean, again, I know that it was a mistake what happened with the lawnmower. It just really wasn't good judgment to drive that on there at that point, but that's besides the, the issue, obviously. Um, and I don't know what the condition is because that was near the end of the season. And so we tried to avoid that area and it, it was kind of re replanted. I don't know that it got, you know, re reseeded. I just know that they kind of pushed the mud back in and, and we survived because it was little kids. I don't know how it would be if soccer's out there in that one area and maybe it's completely fine now, but I mean, so if that was, you know, kind of our, you know, looking for our physical issues, I, the other part, which I don't know if this is a parks and rec, the parking area, obviously for those, for that area, like I really tried my best um, to try to limit the, the, the cars in the neighborhood. So I tried to schedule our games with a half hour break in between to clear out. Obviously, when we had, you know, the rainy, the, the rain, um, those areas are real. Like my wife's, my van got stuck in there and, and, and I didn't think we would get stuck where we were, but it was because I, I mean, we wouldn't have parked there, but it was, it was, it was really different this year as compared to years past. I wasn't in the flag league last year, but at least two years ago, that parking lot, air, the parking area to the left, once you kind of pull in, didn't look that bad before. So, I mean, if we're talking about trying to correct things that I, I'm sure, people who have to use the facilities and if you want to use all the parking it definitely is going to need some fill to bring that a little because it's really like it's almost ponded in areas which it's just never going to it's never going to be right if you if you have a little bit of rain so i mean that can definitely be something i'm sure the neighborhood would appreciate um i did 
you know, I coned off areas, but it took the first, the first week end that we had people there, of course, the neighbors were calling and we had no issues again, but it was just one of those where I think you're always going to continually have people in that area that are not going to be happy. At least if we, if, if, if it's pot, that's part of what we can do is to better the parking area, then obviously I think it'd be, you can definitely fit a few more cars and it would probably be more appreciated by the, the neighbors in the area for sure. So that's kind of, I guess all that I really have about suggestions. I don't know. I don't know where Fuller Fields, if it even is considered really like a, you know, I think, I don't know if it's more just it's grass space we have for you. Cause I, it seems like everything else is pretty, pretty much more organized with parking and, and facilities in that area. So whatever, any upgrade would be, it would be helpful. So I, I mean, I guess I could, I could leave it at that. If that's what you were looking for. Okay. Just for your awareness, Mark, so uh, Fuller Field is considered a field in the town. Of <laughs> awesome. No, and I knew that. You, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the parking. You know, that's that kind oh, of thing. It's fine. Yes. All of our fields are grass space with lines on it. So um, yeah. Fuller is part of that mix. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it can use a little bit. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that I'm going to be in that role next year because my boys want to move up the tackle, but I, at least in terms of what I can provide to the conversation, um, that would be it. So. Have we had any other issues from the neighbors? I know we still have it with soccer and with the parking and are we good? None have come to my attention. Yeah. Oh, Rachel? No, that's what I'm saying. I have not heard, which generally is a good sign. No, that's good. So um, are we trying we to look limit are we trying to limit one uh, game at a time on that field? I know when I was coaching soccer, there was three games at a time sometimes, and the parking was a, an absolute circus. But uh, are we trying to limit how many games at a time, at least, we have there to alleviate some of these parking problems? Uh, we're, we're trying to stagger. Well, COVID kind of helped with, with the staggering in between the game, uh, the more time in between, so there's – you know, people coming and not people coming and going at the same time. So I think that no. that helps a little, but there's still, a, there's still a couple of games going on at the same time, but it's, you know, there's smaller teams. So it's not, as opposed to one big team, it's a couple smaller ones. So it's, it's not no. too, too overwhelmed, but we're trying to, to not um, overwhelm the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, it's more of an issue with the field than it is, you know, with the uh, soccer club. It's just what we have. It's what we have to use. So, Anything else? Soccer, football, anything else? No. Okay, I think we're good then. Kathy's got a lot of notes, I see. So, so I, I got to go on both sides of the paper. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be working on at least some of these things. We're trying to have at least one of these meetings a year, probably two. Um, we'll probably have another one in the summer if we can. And then certainly you can let us know um, any other issues that come up, but uh, we've been trying to do this at a more regular interval so that we can uh, work on these fields. We know our biggest problem in town is the fields are overused. They don't get a rest. And, uh, you know, it, it's difficult sometimes to get them into shape. It's just with no rest. So, but we're trying. All right. Um, and so Dan, maybe just to mention that Generally, we try to do, we're going to try and do these meetings. The board is asked to look at doing one in January and one in June. Mm -hmm. So we would ask your input, you know, if you think that the, these are, these are helpful and um, we appreciate the communication and are those good times to do it. It's with their month that they do it on their monthly meeting. Yeah, that All works right. for us. Okay. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Okay, great. Yeah. We appreciate you taking the time to come too. This is really helpful. Thanks for having thanks us. For yeah, so thanks Kathy, for listening. do you want all the before they leave so they don't have to sit through the torture the rest of the meeting? Do you want them to um, to get a list of a you know a punch list of things on all the fields, or are we too late for this season? Um, I'm not, you mean a, a list of improvements that they want? Yeah, like that, like that baseball provided. Should we have them? Should we leave them with those marching orders? 
Uh, sure. I mean, I think they're they're planning on doing it anyways. I think Little League always does it. Uh, yeah, we have to. Yeah. We will do it again. So yeah. <coughs> okay, so maybe and we can Rachel reach out to can, the other sports teams and Rachel, we can get a, an email out to ask all the groups to do that as they go out and check their fields when the weather breaks. That we can certainly do that. I did like though. Um, I don't know, it was Susanna calling that had the idea of just having like that extra column about is it a safety issue? Is it a wish list? Because yes, we know plastic is wet. We know that that's just not, not something that's gonna happen before spring baseball. <laughs> like that's the reality as far as that. So maybe why do why don't in the I work on putting together that template to then send to the leagues mm -hmm. for them to then fill in so that they'll have that in February that they can then Clem, Mark, Mark, Gary, whoever, you know, Paul, Blake, that are going out and looking at the fields, that they already have that template and kind of when they go out and walk walk the fields, that they can go then plug it in in a format that's beneficial for them, that's beneficial for Parks and Rec, and that's also beneficial for physical services. So I'll, you know, also work with Alan to put that together, of like in which order should we put those things, should they be listed? Should that also include, and I I know this goes to things we've talked about before with union contracts and all of that, but maybe another column too that the sports teams are saying they're willing to do whatever work, like mm -hmm. on the punch list was painting um, the dugouts. Like I'm sure that's something that they might be willing to do on their own. And so is there another column for stuff that they're willing to do that we need some sort of approval for them to do it? I don't like however that works with the union contracts and everything that we've talked about in the past. Okay. And, and, and I think Rachel, it might be helpful to hate to say you folks need to be maybe the coordinator of all of this, but ask Alan to put together his list from all those areas at the same thing because hopefully you're going to see some overlap. But I think getting it all together in one place and then it might be something that we might want to look at once in a while just to see what's on the list because I'm sure Alan's got a different list but there is some dovetailing so I think it I guess we're trying to in a roundabout way so to speak um, get to coordination so you your office is aware of the work on both sides because I that's part of the missing link and maybe that's another way to kind of get it together not really the perfect way but I think it's important to see what they have on their list because I don't think you guys know that so for them to provide us with a list of kind of their work projects. I yeah, I think that okay. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that idea, Mike. I think that sort of puts a twist on things of what is it that they're seeing that's different from us. And I feel like they've they've shared something like that with us, haven't they, Kathy? Like they've talked yeah. about certain fields and all of the things that they look for. Yeah, they've done just a, like a general maintenance chart of what they do. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm adding to that the, yeah. the repair work that they might have a long laundry list of repair work as well. So I think put it all in, let's get it all in one basket. I think that may, might sen make sense to me. So kind of almost like Little League walks the field, but physical services walks the field separately and kind of see if there's overlap on some projects, Mike? Yeah, I, I think okay. so. I mean, ideally, it probably would be nice for the Little League folks to walk with the physical services folk and make up one list, but that might not work because these guys are volunteers. I get it. So yeah. um, I'll burn so, time from work to do it. What's that? I will burn time from work to work, walk with them if need be. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I just think it'd be helpful. Let's let's all get on the same page. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we're good. Certainly, uh, if the sports groups want to uh, stay on for the rest of the meeting, they can. But uh, we're going to head into our regular part of our meeting. You're welcome to stay if you really want to, but uh, you might be bored. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Thanks for listening. Right. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Thanks you. thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, during the meeting, I had texted Mike and Derek, and they're stuck at work, so that's why they did not hop on the call tonight. That's fine. That's fine. Um, 
So if they're not going to hop on, we can, we can do the Harbor Management uh, Commission right now. Then Kathy will get that out. Sure. So um, I, I mean, I saw the report. The big thing is it's not a big thing, but um, I get a memo at my work at DMV uh, about deep and deep. Traditionally, we give two different stickers out for the boats. I just wanted the uh, Harbor Manage uh, the Harbor Masters to know. One is, is the certificate of number, which actually goes on most of the boats that are registered in Connecticut, and it's one color. And then another one is the certificate of, de of decal, which is about um, 3,000 of those. There's about 90,000 the other. They're traditionally different colors. Deep has decided this year to make them all the same color. So I just wanted the Harbor Masters to know that because uh, they're used to seeing two different colors on these two things. They're all gonna be the same color. So. I supplied the email I got from Deep and I gave it to Kathy and Kathy sent it to everybody. So that should uh, alleviate any confusion, I hope. Um, and, and they had heard about it, Dan, too, so. Okay, good. Yeah, so that was good. Um, anything else on the Harbor Master Report, Kathy? Uh, no, I, I sent that out to you uh, when Mike sent it to me. So okay. that's pretty much quiet time except we have ice fishing out there now oh that's good and then the doc that i called you about is from goodwin college you said goodwin college yep um, they um they were they were keeping their doc <laughs> sorry i was at a bob they were keeping their dock out on the river and then when they used to store it they couldn't store it there anymore so they asked permission to bring it in to our cove and they worked with Rachel and um, we um, discussed a fee for them and we actually consulted with Mike to come up with a fee that was reasonable and not too crazy. And I'll let Rachel, cause I can't remember what we charged. We decided to charge them $500 for the season. So. That was good. I thought, was a, I thought it was a dock floating from the uh, <laughs> From the yacht club. On a, yeah, <laughs> on a child basis, they normally um, store it at Seaboard in Glastonbury, which Mike, I believe, has changed ownership. And so they can't keep it where they normally do. And um, uh, Bill Kite, who runs and operates Slipway River Tours, is also the captain of that of the boat at Goodwin. And so he had reached out to us to ask if this for, for the season, if we could help them out. Very good. That $500 goes into the Cove Fund. Yes. Yes. Nice. And we thought that um, that somewhere down the line we may do other things with Goodwin College, and it could certainly benefit the town or benefit us in that area because they own a lot of land there. So, and they have some great uh, walking trails. So that all came into the decision, and we appreciated Mike's help just to kind of run some things by him. So thanks, Mike. Very good. Um, okay, let's see here. What do we got now? Minutes of December 13th. Any additions, corrections, changes? I make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Uh, yep. Right. Who right. seconded? Oh. I do, Kath. Yeah. Okay. Okay, monthly report for November and December. And the, the Keen program is going well, Kathy? Yeah, Mary actually oversees them. She could give you a little update on the programs. Yeah, they've been, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to have a more normal schedule back for the after school program. Uh, since we really lost a year. And even in the fall, since we lost that previous year, we lost the momentum. And what we've realized this fall is there are a whole bunch of kids who through, co through COVID and, and lockdowns and not being in school, they have nothing, they have no idea what the programs are. Um, so we got a lot of those kids as a late fall, winter is going really well, the registration is going really well. And we're just starting up <clears throat> and, uh, and, and the, the, 
the parents and the different schools are now kind of kicking for even more stuff beyond what we can actually offer. But it's just nice to have a bathroom that's going really well. Very good. Any other comments on the monthly reports? I'd like to say um, my daughter is doing the swim team this year. She's doing barracudas. Um, I did it several years ago, but uh, with my son, um, but my daughter is doing it and I just think it's really well run. And a lot of the new people um, to the team also have mentioned just how well run it is. There's, they have tons of coaches, they have practice every night. So you can choose whenever you want to go at the swim meets, like, you know, the kids get ribbons if they get first, second or third place. And it's just, it's a really nice program. So I just wanted to give a little heads up to, to let you know that it, it's, it's really nice. That's great. And Rachel oversees that program. So, um, and there's a lot that particularly we're, we're successful that she was even able to get it up and running this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we're appreciative of that. I, I said, I know that um, I will make sure to relay that message to Ben and all the other coaches and that we were, uh, Mr. Emmett might say we kind of bothered him a lot going into this season. So we're appreciative that that was one of the first programs that he authorized for us to bring back to the schools was the swim team because a lot of the families missed it. But I also going through the rosters with a lot of new families, which is great to see too. Very good. Any other comments? All right. Letters and announcements. Um, so we got an email from Mr. Randall in December. I think it went to the uh, town manager as well, Kathy. It did go to the town manager. And she um, she had the tree warden, uh, Corey Christians, respond to him regarding all the tree cutting and everything. And um, Corey sent a nice uh, letter explaining the process, explaining the Shade Tree Commission. He really went into detail on how they identify all the trees because of the uh, disease with the um, ash borer and so why the trees were coming down in the cove. So he gave them a lot of information. Yeah, I see a lot of the pictures here. I think some of those trees have been taken down already, but uh, you know, Mike brought up in, in talking about Little League um, that they go out on the fields, for instance, physical services go out in the fields and they'll see the fence is loose, but that's not on their work order or whatever it is, and they don't fix it. They don't really look. So uh, some of the things when they're cutting the trees, it's fine to cut the trees, but there was things that Mr. Randall pointed out uh, where there's loose brush and everything. They're out there with the chipper. They don't do it. They don't pick it up. So uh, there's loose branches. There's so I'm not understanding why when you're out there with the equipment, why this other stuff isn't getting done. You're literally right next to some of the things he pointed out. So, you know, that's again, it's physical services. I don't know what the work order is, but you see a bunch of branches that are on the ground and you got a wood chipper there, pick the branches up and throw them in the wood chipper. Is that something that's not um, out of the ordinary that somebody with common sense wouldn't do? Or it's astounding. So I mean, I talked to Kathy about it earlier in the week, but uh, that little uh, area where there's a drainage thing, there's there's branches and stuff all around there, and literally the chipper truck is twenty feet from it, and nobody. Walked, that's part of what he pointed out, some of the other areas. So did physical services get the email from Mr. Randall? Yes. Why didn't they pick the stuff up when they were there? Um, I'm not, I don't, that part I don't know. I know they do, they do plan, <clears throat> they usually plan to go into that area in the winter when it freezes to do some clearing. So it, They'll probably be getting in there, but I can't um, tell you what their time frame is yet. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I know it's not you, that. Kathy. I know it's not you, but it's just incredible. That that's incredible. So hopefully, uh, you know that all get cleaned up, and um, 
you know, I don't think that's a day's worth of work. I really don't from everything I saw. So that's the only comment I have about that. And um, certainly there's a large number of ash trees that were cut down. Yeah. So it's kind of barren, but there- I think one, one other comment on that that I picked up, um, there was a note on the DMV been pushing piles of debris. So I assume that somebody from the town got a hold of the state if that's something that they've been doing. Well, regardless, it should be cleaned up, but I'm not sure if there's a, an issue and where that all came from, but I'll, he refers I'll, to DMV pushing large piles. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't yeah, think, I, mean, I'll, I'll DMV, keep, I don't know if DMV even has equipment to push the stuff there anyway. Yeah, they usually, they don't. It's, it's I think it's a contractor. So what okay. it is, is I will talk to, uh, if I remember, I'll talk to the building superintendent and ask him about it. But uh, I have a feeling they don't even know that it's going on. Right. Yeah. All right, um, let's see. So we also have the meeting dates and revised board member list attached. Well, we had an update that Ken is now our new council liaison, yes. so. <laughs> yep. Hey, Ken. Nice to have someone showing up at the meetings. <laughs> but I want to say thank you to all of you for all the work you put in. It's uh, really important, both the town staff and all the board members. This is critical work. I'm, I'm happy to listen and hear what you're doing and feel free to contact me if I can be of any help. But thank you, Dan and everybody. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I don't see anything um, strange with the meeting dates. The only thing is, you know, when we get to the summer again, Kathy, usually in July and August, they're kind of up in the air. Yeah, you usually decide that when we get closer. Now, do we want to have a, if COVID is out of the way, do we want to have a tour again this year? You know how we used to have a tour? We used to go around to all the uh, facilities. That's entirely I've never to done a tour. tour. Yeah. I, well, I didn't remember I, there was a boat ride promise that never got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you said you could make it, so we canceled it. <laughs> So let's let's talk about that when we get a little closer to it. Uh, depending on how things are, we used we used to go around to most of the facilities in a van, all of us together, and uh, just to look at them, just to see what was up. Yeah. And then we, they used to feed us after. So Kathy used to feed us. So yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could also think about um, the uh, the the tour boat that's that's that goes out of the cove, we might be able to make an arrangement with them. That's true. If you guys wanted to go out on the river with that, we, we could at least inquire whether we could do something and if, if we could set something up for that. So that's food for thought. Okay. Hmm. But Very we'd good. be happy to take you on a tour too. But we like right. to do it in the nice weather. Yeah. Except yeah. we do have ice skating at Spring, uh, Spring Street Pond this year. I was going to ask about that. Um, so is that like something that the town maintains? Yes. Um, we, um, first of all, it maintenance, sta <clears throat> maintenance staff check the thickness of the ice before we open it officially to the public. Oh. So there's a, there's a particular uh, thickness that it has to be to be able to allow, you know, a couple hundred people on the ice. The kids are always on it, whether we have the ice or not, but, um, and, um, and then they will, t time permitting, they will groom it when the ice is thick enough that can support uh, something that could go on it. And, <clears throat> and I don't know about the snow coming up on Saturday, but they do try to remove the snow if there's time after the storm goes by, after they take care of the town's needs. So they do, so so the short answer is yes, they do maintain it. But we and also- do they spray it with water? Do they, they spray it with water too? Yep, mm -hmm. they will. We got lucky with that freezing rain. Ah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they will cut a hole in it and pump the water out and then freeze it. You have to, you have to really time it when it's gonna be cold enough to freeze and the kids aren't gonna get on it because they're, they're on it all the time. Yeah, I, I know uh, someone called me and asked about it because they had just put the water on, but it 
had like frozen just on the top, but then there was a layer of water and then the hard ice. And they were like, you know, this, this didn't seem very safe. And like, is this something that town maintains? And I was like, I, I actually have no idea. Let me ask. Um, but it's nice to know that they maintain it and that they, what do they put a sign up that says like swim at your, or skate at your own risk until it's safe to. Well, to no, we put, a, we put a sign up that says no skating until we oh, open oh. it to public skating. But, and then we ahead, cover Rachel. up the no, then we cover up the no part of the no skating. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, that's that's pretty neat. Is um, wasn't there some sort of project that we were going to be doing? The town got like some money for that area to do something. Yes. What what was that? And is it doing? Is it happening? It, they're they're working through that process. The town got a grant from the state of close to a million dollars to fix the drainage because it always spills over onto the road, and then to um, to make to um, make improve park improvements to the area. So they're going through the process of getting all the paperwork that the state requires before you could get started on a design. But they have some ideas for the design for the drainage problem. And then when they, as they do that, they're gonna, um, we have a Beaver Brook master plan. I know we have master plans for everything, <laughs> but we have a Beaver Brook master plan and the uh, engineering department has that. And I keep telling them it's my million dollars after they fix the drainage. <laughs> so the, it will be looked at for some improvements down there. And they have to look and see, are they gonna have both roads? There's a lot of things they have to look at because the road floods. Do you think that's gonna be something that we'll see in the next like five years? Possibly, yes. Because right. when the state gives you grants, you gotta spend it at, within a certain time frame when you sign a contract. Yeah, but it's going to take some very involved drainage engineering for the drainage in that area. So that's the key thing, and then the park is secondary. But we should—they've got to build up the bank and stuff and make it nice. And we want our little nice fishing pond and then skating. Yeah, there could be a little great. boardwalk through there. <laughs> that's part of the master plan. <laughs> well, that'll be nice um any other old business kathy well i didn't know if this was the time to bring up the capital improvement projects or do it under new business let's do it under new business okay anything else anybody has old business okay let's do new business Kathy. so um we have to add an agenda item because um, just recently, the um, we had we we're, we're, we've been working. Staff has been working with the manager on the possibility of proposed projects with the federal rescue funds. And as part of that, a list was a tentative list was developed for that. And on that list, we had identified some key things. Um, one of them was the air conditioning at the banquet room of the community center, that unit, replacing the HVAC over there for the banquet room. The Millwoods pool um, chlorine tanks are beginning to show some deterioration. And so that was put on the list because again, these were things when we first started looking at the rescue funds as to what was impacted when uh, COVID came through. And obviously the banquet room with the air conditioning, the pool we had open during the summer for all the swimming. And those were also on your capital improvement list. And they were identified as one and two for priorities. And also on that list was, um, was an item that said Millwood's basketball and tennis court, uh, excuse me, um, resurfacing basketball and tennis courts in town with a dollar amount um, and also um, upgrading parks, multiple projects with a dollar amount. And the plan was we identified the basketball and tennis courts for resurfacing and then the plan was to get some input from the park board 
about might there be some multiple park projects that come from our capital project list or that other ideas that came up that we should um, look at to give to be considered as part of the rescue funds. And we thought we had some time to do that. And we were gonna do that like next week or the week after. And I found out that they'd like the list tomorrow with our priorities. So I talked to Mike and uh, Dan about this. And what I put together was, I put together for you to review tonight is a, a list that identifies the capital projects that we've all we've talked about this past couple of months, identifies the projects that could be considered for rescue funds, and then gives a park and rec staff priority. That what we'd like the board to look at tonight is to look at the list and see if you want to change the priorities. If you want to change, we've made some recommendations for the park projects that we want you to look at and consider. Normally we wouldn't do this this quick, but they want the list tomorrow uh, because it needs to go to the Capital Improvement Advisory Commission. It has to go out in their agenda for next their meeting next Wednesday night. So Mary's you gonna share time? a document. Oh I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna put up a document that um, is gonna actually identify what the projects are and what we're recommending, but also you can uh, amend that. How does that sound, Dan? Yeah, that sounds good. So if I start at the top here, can you all see it? Mm -hmm. so, um, so anything in red ink are the projects that are on a tentative list that will go to the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee, and then it will go on to council. And I think, Ken, there's also a subcommittee of council. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, Tom Mazzarella, Kevin Hill, and Pat Pentelo, three people, three counselors are on the subcommittee. Yes. So, um, so first of all, we've already talked about the community center, the HVAC system. So you can see that that total project cost is 571,000. We have some funds uh, uh, that are appropriated for community center improvements. So those are identified to be used. And so the request would be for 444,000. So I'm gonna do this slowly. So if you have questions, please just go ahead and, and just ask me those questions. Then we also, the second priority that the board had was the chlorine tanks. They're approximately between $150,000 and $160,000. So you know me, I always put the higher number because I'm never sure when we're actually going to buy them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's there. The basketball and tennis court resurfacing, that had a, a number that uh, came from the manager of 440,000 and listed below on the first asterisk, it identifies what the basketball and tennis courts are that would be resurfaced over the next several years if we were to get the funding. So that shows the basketball and the tennis courts. So those are the courts around town. So that's uh, a lot of them. And it also shows the tennis courts. And what we did was we moved, we originally had the Mill Woods tennis courts in our, our capital improvement request. So we folded that right into this request. And then we come to the upgrade to the current parks, some multiple projects. And the manager had put in a, um, a dollar amount of $404,000 and was gonna ask the park board, you know, what your projects were. So what we did was um, with staff today, we looked at some of the projects that were still on our list for request for next year. And we discussed some of them. And then we made some recommendations along with um, putting in one of the things with COVID is that our playgrounds and playscapes were used very much. And so 
we put a dollar amount there to kind of rehab them, do some surfacing work with them and get some equipment replacement funds. So that's why um, you'll see the playgrounds and playscapes that we identified to, uh, to the tune of $219,000 to go in and do some work on some of them over the next couple of years. And then- Cassie, can I interrupt you real quick? Sorry, certainly. on the playgrounds, the playgrounds at the schools too, is that included in there? Because I know a bunch of the playgrounds at the schools are in need of repair. Well, through the equipment replacement, that would be for the schools and the okay. parks. Yeah. We identified some of the, we identified the park ones, but the, there's equipment replacement budget number in there for anybody, for any of them. Um, and so then we pulled out, Dan and the board has talked about the Keisha master plan, putting some money aside for that. So we, we thought somewhere to do a master plan or a site plan would be right around 40,000 roughly, and it would be a start. And then believe it or not, after um, I must, my staff and I kind of were looking at trying to do a cross section of everything. And we've said we've had Little League Classic Field on our list for a long time. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's time to put it in here to get it um, looked at. So in a brief snapshot, Dan, that was what the staff and I talked as far as recommendations and really is up for discussion. Yeah, I'm looking at the um, other list and there's a lot of stuff on there already that you, you covered a lot of the things on there. I mean, we're usually happy if we get one or two things, <laughs> you know? And on this list that we're gonna get, if all that comes through, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven things on there. Yes, if you're, yeah. if you're looking at our, our, our yeah. list for next year. Yeah. Kathy, with the federal, with the like COVID funds, whatever they're called, um, I know we had, I had whispered in your ear when in the, at the end of the last meeting that I didn't know if it would be helpful in our proposal if we were able to state exactly how COVID affected those things. And I didn't know if that information added onto this and Ken, you might be able to answer it, would be helpful in this proposal as far as if we can make the paperwork for those funds and justifying our use for it is is helpful if we can state exactly how COVID affected these things and why we need the money to replace stuff because of COVID, if that makes sense. And I think that'll be part of the process, Suzanne, as we move forward. Um, okay. um, some of these, already have a narrative because that was done for the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. Um, so, so I think, and again, this is a very tentative list. As much as I'd love to say we're going to get it all, we have no idea what, what other priorities uh, are on the list or what will go through and be recommended out of the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee or out of the council subcommittee or then the full council. So there's still a process to go. We just didn't oh. want to lose out on the time deadline here. Yeah. Right. So yeah, we... Just so I'm clear, um, on the list that we're looking at, the Nature Center, Solomon Wells, Community Center parking lot, you know, those things there, those are not in the, um, uh, they're not in the mix for the money from the from the federal government, right? But those that are is, still in the mix for our uh, capital improvement. They still can add them. That's a possibility, yes. Okay. So, Suzanne, a follow up on your, sorry, I think I'm still muted. Oh, no, you're good. You to uh, follow up on your question. Um, a little familiar with this um, ARPA funding, and, and it's unlike a grant where you have to really, you know, put narratives together. This will all be audited with, audited with strict uh, scrutiny down the road. So you just got to make sure, because um, I, I assume the town of Wethersfield has already probably got the first chunk of some of this money already available. So you spend it, but just make sure you're spending it for the right things when you're audited. Um, it's pretty easy to pretty easy to get, and there's a lot of flexibility. But there, it also it does have to 
tie in somehow with COVID. For instance, the playgrounds, if they got used, that's COVID related, et cetera. So there's gonna be scrutiny. And I think um, for those of us that attended uh, the council meeting that night, um, and Mike Bozinski from CCM, I think did a great job on you know advising the town of it and stuff. So um, it's, it's, it's un unfortunately, there's not enough money to, to do all the things, but I would agree with Dan. This is kind of a once in a lifetime, and if we can get some of these for some um, useful projects, and I and I mentioned to Kathy today in a conversation, I think for all too long we we have a lot of projects we never can finish them because we never get enough money. You get five thousand a year, but it lasts for ten years, and we never finish them. And if there's anything that might need a little bit more just to bring it over the hump, but could be COVID related, are there any of those that you know? Maybe the five and ten thousand dollar ones as, as well, you know, just as a thought. But um, thank you, Kathy, for putting this together so quickly. And I'll just add to what Mike Mike said. You're absolutely right, Mike. So we have a little over seven million dollars, about which half has already come to the town, and a very small part of that half has been spent. But total between this year and next year, we'll have seven point one million dollars, which needs to be spent by twenty. 26. The decisions, though, need to, you know, start being made this year. And like you said, Mike, this is a once in a lifetime or once in a generation opportunity to invest in Weathersfield's future to do things like you've got listed here. We, we will likely not see this type of opportunity again. And I say, as a member of the town council, at least for this year, this is the single biggest decision we'll make is how do we start allocating these funds? We make a lot of important decisions that affect residents on the town council. This could be the single biggest decision, how we spend the money. So it's really important to get input from, from you guys, from the committees, from all the stakeholders, because these are critical decisions that affect all of us in town. And it is an opportunity to make important investments in, in, in our future. And some of which you've really outlined here. Um, so. Uh, this is to me. It's really exciting because we. It's like an extra pot of money. <laughs> it's just. Uh, it, it's nice to have that. And has um, Cindy Greenblatt talked to you at all about the the farm? Well, so so um, Cindy Greenblatt is very uh, vocal about the farm and has come to many council meetings. Uh, we had the presentation from the University of Hartford students about best uses for the farm. And, and I think that the ball field is one of them. So we have had a lot of um, information, discussion, dialogue, presentation about the farm, but um, not sure how that will all play into all of this. You know, as you know, as you all know, those decisions about the best uses for the farm are still, are still being discussed. Yeah. Okay, very good. There's one thing on here. I just want Kathy to be aware of it. So under basketball courts for old reservoir, um, certainly that needs to be resurfaced or redone. But I know some of the neighbors um, talk to me. I think they talk to each other. They would like to see a, a small playground there for younger kids. So I don't know if that is an option as well or as or if the basketball court can be more or less cut in half. So you have one hoop, you know, you get a half court and the other half, uh, we could somehow turn into a small playground for kids, little kids, or if that's an option at all. It certainly could be looked at, Dan, is in part of, um, part of it, we have the, we've identified some funds for old reservoir for basketball and we've also identified in the other projects for equipment replacement or looking at playscapes. So the possibility could exist that it, it could look at, I'm still waiting to hear back from neighbors. They told me they were gonna get back to me to let me know what they really wanted to see. Because yeah, there, there's, not a, there's not a big, we don't own a big piece of dry land there. We, you know, so we gotta figure that out. Yeah, I mean, and part of the quandary with that is um, when the kids are little, they want to go on the, if there's a playscape, as soon as they hit 12, they don't want to go on the playscape, yeah. they want to shoot baskets. So you're robbing Peter to pay Paul because, yeah. um, so that's kind of what we got to look at. 
Kathy, I assume the Millwoods parking lot, they're talking about the main lot and not the uh, proposed lot next to the tennis courts. That is the proposed lot next to the tennis courts. Oh. And they only need $2,000? Uh, no, the Millwoods parking oh. lot that it says it's... No, no, it, <laughs> says, it says appropriated to date is 34000 and. Oh, and then I'm sorry. I, I thought there was only two thousand more to make it thirty six, but it's thirty four plus. Th I get it. Yeah. Okay. Now, this looks like it's a lot of what we have on our list. So I don't know anybody else. Like I say, it's. I'm stunned to see so many things. <laughs> you know that never happens. So. Yeah, it'd be nice to, to me looking at it. It'd be nice to do the classic field. Yeah. You know, to get the, you know. So that was one of the things we looked, we looked at, and we looked at, you know, we looked at what so when everything else the, in the black up above is what else is still left on this capital improvement request. Yeah. And we, again, we were trying to look at it, what was COVID, what what like, what did we do with, what did COVID affect? Mm -hmm. That's what we were trying to do. And um, and that's what we looked at when we picked up basketball, tennis. Because if you remember when we literally shut the basketball courts down and we, we put plywood over them, the kids took the plywood off. So, I mean, we, we knew there was a need there. So, yeah. so we, it, would, it would, you know, it would, Exactly what Mike said and Dan said, if we fix them, we're not going to be touching them for 10 years. Yeah. And true. they'll be off our list. Yeah. I'd like to, um, I, you know, I see the softball field at town. You know, are there any boosters or anything that could, some of these things. There is a parents group and this yeah. would be, this is just a match. Hopefully they can raise something. Okay. I mean, you could certainly look at, um, if you wanted to lower the match to say we, we put in 15,000 and we took, or say we put in 19,000 and we took the 19,000 out of the playground playscape, we could, mm -hmm. that's, that's what you guys can do. You can look at this. If you feel th there's, there are other priorities that you've heard about or that people talk to us. We, we did talk about the softball field. It's it just that th there's just so much, we, like Ken said, we could add, keep adding to the list. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see, this is kind of off subject, but I'd like to see the high school, my, my son uh, attended Xavier and they have an auction every year. So they needed um, uh, stands for the football field. They only had it on one side of the field. They have an auction. And then at the auction, they just said, all right, we need, we need money for the stands. Uh, everybody wants to donate a hundred dollars for your paddle. Everybody wants to date, donate five hundred dollars for your paddle. They raised like forty thousand dollars in about ten minutes. Um, but because they have an auction and it's it's channeled to some specific thing, they can get things done quickly. And I always wonder why the high school doesn't have a group of parents that would organize these type of auctions where they can put the money into specific uh, projects for the high school. Um, and this would be something like that where you could you could start you know having specific projects targeted. So uh, I, it just was astounding to me when I was there. I couldn't believe how much money they raised in about 10 minutes. Well, I will I let the board know that uh, an email was sent to the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee from a parent member of this little group, encouraging them to support um, your rec recommendation to put 25,000 aside for the softball field. Okay. So just so you know, there is, they're out there lobbying for it. So just to be aware of that. All right. Anything else? Does anybody have anything else or? Yeah, I think it looks good. Are you good with the priorities the way they are? I think so. It's but you know the top two definitely have to get done. Do we do we need a formal motion for this? Are you okay, Kathy, with the consensus? 
if if you give me a consensus, uh, you know, I'm good. Or you could, I think the the I think for your priorities, the last time you voted uh, to approve per the per the report that was um, presented. Okay. Can I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second, Suzanne. Yeah. And the, the only other comment, Kathy, I, I know we're only looking at, she's only asked you for what the 400,000 plus, but um, the numbers beyond that, just in case, <laughs> there's another haul and there's, by the way, you know, how about another 50 or something like that? I guess the list as it is, we just go follow the ones that are beyond the, the ones in red. Is that, would that work for you? So you don't have to come back to us if, if there's more money available or less money, if the same order would follow? Yeah, if you guys are good with the five through 10, or if you want to swap those around. Just just in case, so it doesn't leave you hanging in case you need another quick quick response. Yeah, no, you could just say the entire priority list of projects one through 10. Yeah. Is that good? Yep. That works. All right, all, the, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any uh, no's? Abstentions? No. Okay. It's what's incredible is if it was just another, you know, four hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, everything on that list would, would do almost everything. Then we'd have nothing to do. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we could take it easy for a year. No, if Dan's retired, we'll hire him to oversee these projects. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Can I just make a quick comment, Kathy, on that and follow up on what Ken said? Obviously, this is um, going to be a contentious issue as to what the ARPA funny money gets spent on and whether it goes to, um, you know, lowering our mill rate or going to actual real projects that, um, are gonna be beneficial for the community. So if we can have um, maybe a call to action of some form or an email as to what town council meetings make a difference for committee members and uh, sports teams and town folk to show up to to speak at and which ones would make a difference as far as which ones we should go to versus which ones if we have to skip one is the right thing to do, that I think is, is helpful. Okay, sure. It's a great suggestion. And I'll keep you guys posted as well. Kathy will have the information too, but it's a great suggestion. Thanks, Ken. All right, any other new business, Kathy? No, I, I had originally tried to keep this to a small agenda we got a little crazy. Well, Tom's Tom's itching to say something right now. Oh, not me, not me. Are you um, ready for it? <laughs> okay. Solomon Wells House, Kathy. Anything? Nothing. You still might beat nine o'clock. Yeah, it's <laughs> gonna be close. It's better than the historic commission, Ken. This could be worse, so. Uh, I haven't been on those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the Solomon Wells House, but wasn't something on there for the farm, or not for the farm, for the for the money for the Solomon Wells House? Was there something there? Not, not uh, exterior no. repairs. Exterior repairs. All right. Right. Well, maybe and that'll... the parking lot. All right. And just to go back to that re little report we showed you, I will be sending that to you. I just we just had to get it done late, so. Yep. Okay. All right, next thing is Keisha Farm Committee update. So what we did is we broke into subcommittees. I'm on a subcommittee about uh, fields and trails. So I'm with uh, Paul Lacella, Mike Garcini, and Mary Breton. And um, what there's some research going on. I supplied them with the field uh, usage and the field condition report I got from Kathy and uh, there's something else I supplied them with. I, I can't remember offhand. There's two things that Kathy had given me and I supplied uh, them with that. In addition to that, I did a, a write-up on what the fields were like 50 years ago. 
what they are today and now at this point when we meet again which is going to be next tuesday i think we have to write a recommendation on what uh, we think they should do with the fields and the trails so and it's not going to be just specific to the farm it's going to be the farm but it's going to be for instance if you put a field at mill woods maybe you don't have to put two or three fields up on the farm you only have to put one field on a farm um, if you do walking trails on Wilkes, you know, and ski trails, you know, maybe that'll limit the, the trails you need on the, on Keisha Farm. It's going to be like that. It's going to be more um, inclusive, um, not just to the farm, it's going to be more like overall, because I think that's one of the things that was lacking was, um, you know, how does everything fit together? In the so that is something that I was working on part of it. I, like I said, I got my two parts done, and then uh, I think Mary and uh, Mike and Paul were working on the other part of it. So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be, I think, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think right now we're looking at one field on uh, Keisha Farm with the idea that the field on the master plan at Mill Woods is completed. So it's two fields overall. You would have space if there's a third field needed down the road. So that would just be a recommendation. It doesn't mean everything's going to get done right away. It doesn't even mean after the full committee gets together that that's all we're going to uh, recommend. So uh, that's where we are with that. Any questions on that? And we do have a time frame where we're trying to get everything done by the end of February so that we can get it to the council because I know we know there's a time limit on it, so. And then I'm trying to think what the other committees were. There's some with the, with the farm, with farming, and there's some with the barn. There's, I think, three subcommittees. So I can't remember all of them, but um, each subcommittee is doing some work on that. So uh, it'll be a pretty, uh, rounded report that we can give the council so they can have an idea of you know maybe what what the community wants and you know how they want to proceed going forward so that's all i have um anybody have any questions no all right board member comments any comments nope everyone's tired okay can i have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. <laughs> adjourn. Second. Okay. All right. All those in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Ken. Good, good meeting. Bye. Stay Thank safe you. and storm, good job. everyone. Good job. Be today. careful Saturday. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. I'm going to stop the Bye. recording. Bye.